Snowball Spa. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Monday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Well, Jared, it looks like the schools that make investment for college baseball are the schools we're going to see in the College World Series. All ACC or SEC field in Omaha. Last night, you know what happened last night? Whatever. The Pac-12 is officially dead with Kentucky knocking out Oregon State. Yeah, that'd be it. That'd be it. The Pac-12 is dead. Now, the biggest question surrounding the, the College World Series, though, who's going to win Rocco's Jello Shot Challenge? <laughs> NBA Finals, Celtics up 2 nothing. What's the difference for Dallas? It, it seems like... You know, we talked about an ad nauseum in the in the Thunder series, and even last series, how dominant Dallas was defensively in the paint. Doesn't feel like that's happening quite as much. It seems like Boston's been able to get to the to the rim and 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 finish way more successfully than the others. So what's the difference for Dallas? Are you were you surprised how many people picked the Mavericks? I certainly was. It felt like recency bias as opposed mm-hmm. to you know but anyway uh what has to change for dallas to get back into the series as, it, as it, the scene shifts for wednesday down to the metroplex down 2-0 um scotty scheffler man i came across some numbers last night from kyle porter on twitter mm-hmm. that talk about how dominant he's been some of these are unbelievable we'll talk about him when in the memorial u.s open week Pinehurst, number two, one of the That's classic plays. I know. That snuck up on me. <clears throat> I, I saw something this weekend. It was like, oh, Tiger's getting ready for Pinehurst. I'm like, okay, when? And then, well, and then I realized, you know what? Next, th- this coming <laughs> Sunday is Father's Day, and it's always yep. Father's Day weekend. So, but yeah, he is. Uh, Scheffler, these numbers are crazy. And then. One of the coolest things I have seen in a while I witnessed yesterday. And I'll tell you what that is right here off the top. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things or whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, Stay in touch with the show. Log on to kadsam.com, or you can download the app. The Paragon app is free, and it's got all radio. It's got the penny news. It's also got Big Elk and Paragon TV when we roll back around to the high school sports season. And, of course, the podcast, Skinny on Sports Podcast, is available everywhere. Podcast drop. How are you today, Jared? Good. How are you? I'm surprised you're not more red after spending two days... Well, on the turf. You got, oh, there you go. Oh, whoa, hello, hello, hello. Yeah. You know, the last yeah, time. About, about game number five yesterday for the 10 I it occurred to me, I need to apply more sunblock on my neck. I, I mean, I, could, I thought I could hear it sizzling. You know, the last time, <clears throat> I guess it's been about a month ago, where I spent kind of two days out there. Mm-hmm. Something happened that I don't know if it's ever happened since I've been an adult. My legs peeled. Like, my shins and calves peeled. I've done that. Yeah. I've had that. I didn't realize I'm just starting to scratch my leg, and I realized it's yeah. like, kind of like dandruff. I did that, too. I realized, oh, I'm peeling. That's what's going on. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, where you were at yesterday, this is, I got to tell you, one of the cool, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this, one of the coolest things I have witnessed or been a part of uh, in, a, in a very long time. And so, for me, one of the worst parts, a matter of fact, the worst part of this proliferation of travel 
baseball, travel softball, travel basketball. It doesn't matter which any of it you're talking about. All of a sudden, over the last handful of years, at least since Wyatt's been kind of playing mm-hmm. from start to now, he's kind of he's almost past it, but at least for the the younger the the youth part of it, it's all, there, there was so much more of a willingness to play on Sunday. It's not even a question anymore. Mm-hmm. Between the money you can generate, having way more teams, and making it two days, Sunday is just in play. It's it's not even – you don't even think about it. Well, that and if you're trying to do a two-day tournament, a Friday, Saturday, it's hard for well, that, parents but, to but if you don't, the, and, the point is, the, the yeah. people figure out, wow, we can play Saturday and Sunday, we can get so many more teams, and then make it a two-day tournament. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So out here, kudos to everybody that's a part of it. I, I know Jared and Jennifer, uh, Chuck Hargrove is a big part of, of getting this going. We've started to have a church service. Stop playing. Mm-hmm. Do you guys do this on the softball side? No, but there's a sign that says if you want to be a part of this, go to field, go, go uh, over. whatever field it's on over on the baseball side. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they make the softball side aware that's happening over there so people yeah. can go over there. Yes. Yeah, it's just, I mean, there's, there's games that are played before it. Mm-hmm. Probably one, a slate, one or maybe two. Maybe a 9 a.m. game. <clears throat> yeah, and then yeah. at 10 o'clock you stop. It, it was just, I think uh, they counted over 400 there yesterday. You know, the teams, the kids were on the field. Um, Elo, one of the the former Elkettes, they just graduated this year. She sang some praise songs. Oh. Coach Fisher, Michael, Michael Fisher gave the message. Uh, it was just, it, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome, and I hope it's something that takes hold yeah. everywhere. Yeah. This is something that should spread because what does it matter if you get done at 7.45 or 7 at night? Oh, right, yeah. It really doesn't no. matter. And, and taking out that 30 minutes of time to to let those kids hear, hear that, I, I mean, it was so cool. So, once again, kudos to everybody that, that uh, thought of that that put it into practice, and Jason Chuck uh, Hargrove are a big part of it uh, and getting people out there to be able to do that. I, I know there's been a different speaker, I guess, each time. This is the first time that we've been here on a, on a Sunday playing. Mm. Uh, but, no, fantastic. It is it is great, and I hope it's one of those things, like I said, that that people take back because, you know, there's people from everywhere this weekend out here on both sides, you know, Take that back to where they're to where they're at, and that that starts to spread, and that becomes a thing because it is, in my opinion, it's the worst thing about all that is Sunday is just a day you play now instead of like it used to be. So anyhow, I just want to get that out there for those people that uh, that that thought of that, put it on, put it into practice, and giving everybody an opportunity. And man, it was yes. there's people everywhere surrounding the you know in the in the stands and and sitting back in their chairs, and there was. A handful even had their Bibles with them, I mean, and you know, of course, with the way the world is now, all you have to do is have your phone, and you can find whatever the message is. Yeah, uh, that way too. Yeah. But it was great; it was absolutely fantastic. So, great job for all those folks that that thought of that and put that into practice. Speaking of great, <clears throat> Scotty Scheffler. You know, the question on the text line: Will Scheffler overtake Tiger's records? I mean, it. You, you knew at some point, like, like you know, Jack was when Jack was. <clears throat> and then, of course, Tiger came along years and years later. And so you, you always know there's going to be another somebody. I am shocked how fast. Like, there hasn't been much of a gap between Tiger's, not near the gap it was from Jack to Tiger, right? Mm-hmm. But he, it, it, it's... It's hard to it's hard to like fathom that man this guy is doing and dominating a lot the same way that Tiger Woods did in his prime. It just you just didn't I don't I, I certainly wasn't ready for it. You know cuz how many oh the next Tigers has there been since Tigers kind of dropped off. Yeah, they uh I mean there's been some oh, I'm trying to think who who I mean, Rory, obviously. Rory. <clears throat> you no, know, Spieth went through a pretty good run Jordan's, there. Yeah, yeah, he. I thought there was a little bit there that that, that was kind of creeping in. But to be honest with you, I never took it seriously. 
You know, yeah. it's just like this is clickbait fodder that people just, you know, want to get people riled up for if you're pro tiger or not or whatever. But this seriously has a has this. You can really have a serious confrontation about Scotty Scheffler. At least on the <clears throat> when it when it comes to the tour wins. All right, so listen listen to these numbers. All right, so from so from March tenth to June tenth of this season. So three months, March, April, May, uh, four months. Yeah, Kepka's another one. That's a great point. Kepka won a bunch of majors there. Brooks did, yeah. In his, in his little time there. So between March 10th and June 10th, Scotty Scheffler has as many or more wins than this list of guys has since January 1st of 2020. Mm. Xander Shoffley, Tony Finau, Matthew, uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Bryson DeChambeau, Hideki, Sam Burns, Justin Thomas, and Wyndham Clark. Okay? In the last eight events on the PGA Tour, if you made the cut in all eight and shot the average, you would have finished all eight tournaments at five over par. Okay? Scotty Scheffler played those tournaments 106 under. And then this one is the one that, like, floored me. Patrick Reed, Adam Scott, Cameron Young, Tyrrell Hatton, Justin Rose, Ricky Fowler, Jason Day, Jordan Spieth, Will Zalatoris, Justin Thomas, Colin Morikawa, Bryson DeChambeau, and Hideki Matsuyama. It's a pretty good list of players, right? Scotty Scheffler has more worldwide wins since January 1st of 2022 than not only everybody on that list, but everybody on that list combined. That's a, that's a, I just got dizzy (laughs) thinking about that. (laughs) That, That's, you're naming a lot of really good players there and what he's doing is awesome on an absolute roll. Now there is this. To be fair, this is a, a text that, and and this is ought to be pointed out. It is a little bit different now than it has been in the past, <clears throat> and I say that because of live. The fields you have, even if you're the biggest PGA Tour supporter, the fields aren't as strong as they once were, just because you've lost. 48 of those guys there's no doubt about that yeah so that i mean that that has to be pointed out that that is i was that was kind of an angle i was going to look at like are we are we in an era where he's good and everyone else is just kind of okay and i mean he's great is everyone else good you see what i'm saying but then you're right i forgot about the live thing and the and the fields are a little bit different on the pga tour with some of these signature events there's not as many you know, from 100, 156 to 120. I mean, there's there's ways that you can sort of poke holes into what he's done. But I do know this. Outside of a Renegade Cop arresting him in Louisville before one of the PGA Championship rounds, I don't know how she can beat him. You know, he made, yeah. he made the Masters, which where everybody's at, or most are there, he made that completely boring on the back nine because he just dominated. I think th- the Tiger thing is interesting. It, it, the, the thing is he's got to go for so much longer than just this period to even really bring that up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, to, well, at least to start to compare. I mean, for short stretches, sure, you can compare here, but then, you know, Tiger had... I don't know, 20 short stretches like this or whatever it is. But, man, he is dominant. And, you know, going to the U.S. Open this week, it does sort of have, as as he's starting to, as he started to put together major championship performances kind of over and over, winning a few of them, 
it's not to the level yet. He's not to Scotty or the field like Tiger was just yet. But man, have him win a couple others. You know, here over the next two years, if he can knock off another couple of majors, yeah, by the time we get to the 2026 Masters, that conversation could absolutely be in play. Like, oh, you, who, who are you taking here, Jared? Scotty or the field? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Speaking of which, did you see the article on ESPN.com? I don't know if it came out today or uh, – yeah, today, about um, – it's it basically ranks all 156 golfers in okay. the field. I've seen that, and they tier them right tier one, tier two, et cetera. Uh, okay, who do you think's on tier one? Scotty and Scotty. Yeah, it's just Scotty. Is it? That's it. Tier two is 18 other golfers. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't so, think you I mean, can put anybody as, no. his, as his equal right no. now. Yeah. So yeah, so that, that's a good question. Scotty in the field. Even this weekend, it's like Scotty in the field, right? I'm sure we'll pick our, we'll make our picks mm-hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, whenever. I'm sure Scotty might be on both of ours. Well, yeah. Well, it'd have to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, I mean. So he's, well, my point is he's getting that, that attention to when he's being shelved on top by himself. Well, I think, and, I think that absolutely is right. Now, being the, being by himself now versus being on Tiger's level from then. You know that's a totally different. Con- it's a totally different level, right? Yeah. But as far as right now around the world in the game of golf, I don't know how you could possibly pick anybody. <laughs> I mean, he he has been better than everybody. No, I'll and, say, and, it, and it's yeah. not. It, it's been for a while. Right, it has. And I'll say this: and it for any sport, I love a good rivalry. I'd love to see someone else try to not rival in the sense of I hate you, you hate me, but challenge him and get two really good guys you know maybe one day we could have that that would make golf very fun for an average viewer like me okay where's scotty at where's the other guy at but i don't know if there's going to be another guy right now that could play at his level that's probably a whole other conversation to have like who could that be because i mean like well you mentioned rory shafle brooks I mean, d- it would be nice if it would be a, a, if it was like Bryson or, or one of the live guys. That way, you could have the yeah have both both of those angles. That'd be fun. Yeah, it's got a like text. WCW think about, versus WWE type thing. <laughs> think about how much money Ted Scott has made. His caddy. Oh man! You know how much he's made this year so far? The caddy? No, Scotty. No. How well, much we does- can just do ten percent off. <laughs> how much does Scotty make? Just fire, I guess. Jeez, ah, I'm horrible at this. Five point five. Uh, you, no, see, you realize he won four million oh, yesterday. Okay, yeah, that's right. Um, so I told you I'm horrible at this. So I got a twenty and a half, twenty, twenty-two point three million. That's way closer. <laughs> what is it? Twenty-four point oh two million to point oh two four million. For for reference, last year. He broke the PGA Tour's all-time earnings record at $21 million. We're not even to the second major, and he's already broke that record at $24 million. It's fifth win of the year. That's amazing. Yeah. He broke the all-time single-season money record before the U.S. Open even teed it up. So I know you're pretty hooked up this week, and did you watch a lot? Did you get not to really. catch much? No, I, mean, I mean either. I just saw highlights. I followed. I followed along with it, like on the app or what have mm-hmm. you. I didn't watch a ton of it. Anytime I got home at night, I'd turn on Sports Center just yeah. to try to catch up on everything. You know, on on Saturday, I know that he was leading by what three or four going into yesterday. He made a triple bogey. I mean, that's and he played awful for him. I think it was yesterday was only what like the third. Like third over par round of his season or something like that. I mean, it's absurd, absolutely absurd. But yeah, we'll I was our- able to get home in time for Game One of the Stanley Cup Finals Saturday night. One to uh, one nothing. Florida leads the series tonight's Game Two. In that Florida. game was so crazy because it seemed like Edmonton was on the offensive. Like 75% of the game, it felt like. I don't know if there's an official number for that, but based on shots on goal. Mm-hmm. But Florida's goalie was awesome. That's the problem. 
It's a problem in the NHL playoffs sometimes for you. You can absolutely dominate. But if you can't get it past the brick wall, it doesn't and, matter. And during a power play, just for example, during a power play, there was a they uh, Edmonton. I mean, they got him going left or right all over the place, and they got him where he slipped, and there was a wide open goal, and somehow he recovered to make to block the shot. That's how dialed in he was. So game two tonight. That's gonna be fun. Yep, game two is tonight. Oh man. I was just looking at the U.S. Open TV schedule. What's that look like? Who's broadcasting it? NBC. Mm, darn it. Wait. I got Peacock. Never mind. Peacock. So it's Thursday. This would be uh, Eastern time. So 5.30 A till 4 P. It's on USA. Okay. Then 4 P to 7 P. It's on Peacock. Friday, 5.30 to noon, Peacock. Noon to 6, NBC. And then the last hour, Peacock. And then on the weekend, 10 to noon, or uh, actually 9 to 11, USA. 11 to 7, NBC. Same thing. Actually, there's another hour on USA on Sunday. So an hour earlier. 8 to 11 instead of 9. There it is. I knew Peacock was going to be involved. Yeah. Knew it. I I knew I had to hold on to that for a little bit. Knew it. Got it for that football game, and I've held on to it. Yeah, I knew it. We'll talk about the course. I might give you my sign-in info. That'd be nice. We'll talk about the course. You know how much I watch Peacock? Like zero. I've watched it one time. For that football game? It was. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I was at somebody's house. For the, the uh, what was it, the Chiefs and Dolphins? Yeah, that ice game, that yes. really cold game, yeah. Yes, that's the only time I've ever even yeah, knew I Peacock got it. was a thing. It's like five bucks a month. It's not like it's breaking the bank, but I'm not I'm not getting my five bucks out of it, that's for sure. I watched that TED series, which is hilarious, but I haven't watched, nah, not much, not much drawing me back. So this will. You just open my, yep. great place to go watch the Stanley Cup Finals tonight would be at 2103 South Main at the Boomtown Grill. Boomtown's got something for everybody, from steaks to chicken to seafood, pizzas, pastas, 12 big screen TVs, happy hour 2 to 6, Monday through Friday, 11 beers on tap, 30 bottles or cans available, imports and domestic beers as well, large wine selection, burgers, sandwiches, great appetizer plates and specials as well. It's the Boomtown Grill, open seven days a week. 11 to 10 on Sunday through Thursday, 11 to 11 on Friday and Saturday. Go check them out at 2103 South Main right here in Elk City. Also coming up Thursday, Jared, picking in the park. Free event here Thursday, 8 o'clock in Ackley Park. Cody Brewer, Cooper Twyman, J.C. Aquarius, Caroline Grace. The uh, the surf bar will be there. Mm, Yeah. Don't tell my wife. She loves that. Surf bar will be there for some treats. Check it out. 8 o'clock. Picking in the park. Brought to you by KECO. Also, Joshua S. Thomas of Edward Jones. Gas, Hutches, and the Tips Agency. Whoops. As well. All right. Game two NBA Finals last night. <clears throat> the Boston Celtics defeat the Dallas Mavericks for the second time in as many tries early on in this series. Final score of 105-98. to 98. You know, Luca was awesome, but there's just you know, everybody in double figures for Dallas, 32 from Luca. But it, it just it's not quite the same punch from the other guys for for the Dallas Mavericks in this series as what we saw in, in the run to the NBA Finals last night. Drew Holiday was incredible. 11 of 14 with 26 points. Um, Tatum had 18, but 12 assists. Jalen Brown with 21 on an efficient 15, 15 uh, shots. You know, Derek White is good. Porzingis came off the bench. He wasn't quite as hot as he was in game one early on, but he still scored 12 and, and I thought moved around. He looked, he looked a little bit better moving around maybe even than he did in game one. So that's a positive sign for the Celtics. I, be honest with you, I can't find a negative 
uh, for Boston right now through two games and a two nothing lead over the Mavs. Well, they've been great. They've, um, uh, you know, we're going to talk about you know why was a lot of people kind of wishy washy on picking these finals, but and the reason for me was because they played in the East and think the East is very good. That they look like a really good team in a bad conference, especially through the playoffs. <clears throat> but man, they're they're proving me wrong. They're they look like a full solid team you know it doesn't have to be Porzingis like he was in game one uh, you know it could be Holiday it could be Brown it could be a combination of those guys and and that's not what's happening for Dallas I feel I feel like it's been kind of one guy and, and that's not enough yeah Luke has been great Kyrie's been a little lackluster you know I thought last night when Dallas Got back in it toward the end there. A big part of that was Kyrie getting to the rim, and he was able to finish at the rim. So maybe that's something looking forward. I, I listened to a bunch of the the talk afterwards. It, it was it was almost like a a problem Dallas may not be able to fix because Boston plays such good defense that in the. And the times where we've seen throughout these playoffs some games that they've lost, it was because teams really got up and down, like Indiana. You know, they were scoring even without Halliburton. They were putting up points. But they, but that's the way they play. Get it out of the bucket, get a miss, and go, and go, and go. Whereas because Dallas is kind of, you know, Luka, Kyrie-centric, it's more slow it down. And the problem with slowing it down is you get – Boston back set with all five guys ready to play half court defense, and that makes it exceptionally harder than maybe getting some open shots. You know, and uh, I think it was Josh Hart that was on there on the ESPN coverage after it was over, talking about you know asking him what what can they change, and he said maybe have somebody else handle the ball and get Luca and, and Kyrie maybe off of it. Okay, so who's that going to be? It doesn't seem like anybody in the starting lineup is that Derek Jones Jr. Is he the one? Um, you know, Exum coming off the bench, Josh Green coming off the bench. Do they have to make kind of a, a change there if that's the the route they want to go? But it does. It, it seems like you know even Lucas' first half, which was absolutely phenomenal. Even then, he was still having to make some pretty tough shots. You know, it wasn't like he was just getting free and. And dominating, he was still, you know, stepping back and trying to create his own his own angles, and that just becomes harder and harder as yeah. the game goes on. Well, as the series goes on too, yeah, you can't you can't continue to do that. And and Kyrie's got to do something. He's a he's a vet at this point. He's been on this position he, or on this stage. He shouldn't make a make a change. But I'm with you. I don't know what that could be for for Dallas as a whole. I don't know what they can do better. I mean, I know what they could do better, but I don't know if they can. Yeah, six of twenty six from three and gonna cut it when Boston, you know, even then Boston didn't shoot it very great last night. Ten of thirty nine from three, which that's I mean, they're firing forty. You can just you can guarantee that. And that's been a big part of, you know, we've seen the Mavs, you know, free throw line got kind of caught up to him again last night, missed eight free throws and twenty four attempts. And you just aren't gonna be able to get away with kind of giving up those points like that against the Celtics team. Now, a lot of people were picking Dallas in this series, which it it really did surprise me. I think part of it is what you said, the run through the East with the injured teams. You weren't, you know, we've and, and we've seen this Boston team in the playoffs, and they've come up short in the Tatum and Brown era multiple times. So I'm sure that played into it a little bit. Um, you know, Dallas's run played into it a little bit. But, man, you look at this Celtics team. They are now 39-4 and four at home. No, 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 it's more than that. Wait, 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 wait. They won all the series in five, right? So three, six, eight. 72 and like 20 at home. And then that means they're 76, 78 and 20 overall. I mean, this is a, it's almost like because of what happened in the East and because of how easy it looked for Boston. I mean, heck, it, it it's almost like they threw a couple of games away because they got bored. We talked about it, how 
like they just lose concentration and maybe that was part of it and the series isn't over it doesn't you know the old adage the series doesn't start until somebody wins a game on the other one's home floor Mm -hmm. but man i just i think people were kind of rope-a-doped one by what dallas was doing but forgot just how good this boston team is yeah i was uh I was kind of sucked into, you know, how how Dallas looked against the Timberwolves. You know, winning that I'm making it look easy doing it in 5. And I just, you know, I thought, well, if they can get past the Timberwolves cuz I was really wanting to see a a Timberwolves Celtics final because of the Timberwolves defense and and going up against Celtics and their offense, but so I was sucked into the fact that well Dallas might just be that team of destiny, you know, just just going through this playoff run of, you know, Clippers who was a lot of people's preseason or pre postseason favorite uh to make a run in the West. And then uh, of course they took down the Thunder and then the Timberwolves, like I just said. So that's why I was kinda I thought they were just kind of that team that was getting hot at the right time. But uh, just for the record though, I did pick Boston in seven, but maybe maybe even that looks a little silly. Yeah, I mean, listen, and we've seen these series. It's it's pretty easy to overreact to a, a result yeah. or, or one one result, much less two. And we may come in here on Thursday morning going, oh, that's that Dallas team that we saw in the entirety of the Western Conference playoffs. They just need to get back home, and you know, can they beat? Can they sneak one or steal one at uh, at Boston? But they're. The thing I think the the noticeable difference is as far as you know we talked about maybe being able to see if the Thunder offensive scheme would could work better against Dallas if you just make shots because that's about what 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 Boston does. The one thing that Boston has that the Thunder doesn't though they play very similar, but Jason Tatum is like six foot nine. Getting in, getting to the rim. Jalen Brown's like six seven, six eight, getting to the rim. You know, Shea's what six four. Lou Dort six three or four. You know, the the size on the wings mm-hmm. of those two guys is is something that the Thunder they're just not quite as as big. And and of course, then you got to. A however many year vet in, in Porzingis who plays just a lot like Chet. But you're also talking about a rookie versus a, a veteran guy. And, and Boston is immensely seasoned for this moment. I mean, this they built this team, this Tatum and Brown for six or seven years now. Yeah, this feels like a this feels like a the accumulation of all that. That's right. It feels like a, it's a long. I say a long. Well, six seven years in the NBA is a long time. It feels like they've been laying this road for, for quite a while. You know, they got there in 22, won game one, and then kind of fell apart against the, the Warriors. And now back again in, in 24. The offseason moves they made, I think, have proven to be fantastic. You know, they it was like they, they trusted the Tatum-Brown duo. They just felt something needed to change around them. And so Marcus Spart is out of there. You know, getting Porzingis, getting uh, uh, Drew Holiday, I think it's um, maybe it's it's been just what they needed. Like, and this is so it's like the the cautionary tale for the Thunder, right? It took, I think this is the sixth playoff run together for Tatum and Brown. Well, they didn't make any sort. They didn't really make any major changes until after year five or after year six. This last summer, what I'm gonna say, they gave it. They gave it the opportunity to. To breathe, and to find exactly what. They felt like they needed to to change the results. And I know everybody's thinking this this summer is going to be when the Thunder does that. That's why I don't know. I don't know. I, I we all think that well, Giddy doesn't fit because he can't shoot. Eh, he's twenty one. You know, I I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see 
at least a little bit more patience than what a lot of people think. And I think the Celtics are kind of the the template for that. Well, I know it's a little little cart before the horse to talk about this because the series is still happening. But with the way they look so far, maybe this is something we could talk about later. Or are they the best ran organization in the NBA? The Celtics? Yeah. I mean, you had Danny Ainge running the show. Then then Stevens doesn't want to coach. Any, or I don't know. He's offered Danny Ainge's job, takes it, and it just continues. It just seems like they, they find the right parts. It's It just seems well ran. I mean, every every organization has questionable moves, sure. They seem to be on an even kill the entire time, and it's finally paying off. Well, I think it, it, it helps with making the right draft picks with Tatum and Brown, mm-hmm. which are fairly similar players, similar sizes, but yet do different things. Like they're, They really complement each other a lot better than you might have thought when it first happened when you see oh a six eight wing guy but tatum's playmaking playmaking ability was completely on display last night being able to get into the paint either score or find somebody that was open i mean those guys they didn't necessarily shoot it great 14 of 37 i mean that's not wonderful two of 12 from three but you know what else they did they had 19 assists combined and so I, I think they're both a little bit more flexible, and that and that helps with what you're saying as far as stability goes, because you know you've got two of the best what twenty players in the league, maybe. That's always a pretty good start, mm-hmm. you know, a pretty good place to start, and then to to build around. Yeah, I think I think they hit a home run with with Holiday though, because they didn't lose much on the defensive end from him from Marcus Smart to, to Drew mm-hmm. Holiday, which is it was just saying a lot because you know Smart was a really good defensive player. But even if, uh, let's say they did lose just a little, they made up for it in spades on the other end. Absolutely. And so, man, and, and identifying that player – and being able to to make the moves to get him, I think, yeah, I mean that's that that shows, but that that shows that they had to me they 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 gave they gave the team multiple chances to either prove it was right or prove it was wrong, and then they finally got to the point of okay, we've got to upgrade here or we got to change this just a little bit there, and they've done it. And it seems like they've they've those two pieces to me with Porzingis and and, and Holiday were the exact two things that that kind of unlock everything they were trying to do, yeah. both offensively and then obviously defensively he can guard the rim. So that's where I guess the, the the cautionary part of it for Oklahoma City fans, if you don't see the big swings that you want to see, it doesn't necessarily mean that. You know the team is still in development mode, or they don't want to. That's patience. You don't just. I mean, we've we've seen it for years in this league. It's very, 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 very rare to be able to skip steps, en route to a title. En route to a title, you almost you almost have to go through the battles, and unfortunately go through the battles and, and fail before you kind of build up the scar tissue that it takes to, to go through the battles and win one. And this Boston team is absolutely kind of, it, it does, you know, there's, there's been a ton of these teams from, you know, Detroit not being able to, to beat Boston to then finally getting over the hump. Can't beat the Lakers. Okay, go back again. Now, now you win two titles. And then here comes MJ. Can't beat the Pistons. Can't beat the Pistons. Can't beat the Pistons. Oh, finally got over the hump of the Pistons. You know, it's just we've seen this happen a lot throughout the NBA's history, and uh, for for Boston fans, you know, it's I'm sure you want to talk about impatient. 
I'm sure there was a ton of tra- – I mean, how many times? I mean, shoot, I think we even had the conversation even last year. I think it was after last year's playoff of you know, the Nationals. Oh, we've got to break up Tatum and Brown. And you know, I think we even talked about, you know, he'd be awesome here, Jalen Brown. Well, he'd be like the perfect guy. <laughs> you know, I think we ta- we've had that conversation, but they didn't do it. And and so I think they're going to reap the rewards of not doing it. Is there something? What has to change for Dallas? Just get well, I mean, somebody believe- beside Kyrie. I mean, somebody yeah, Kyrie's besides got to be better. Yeah. He's got to be better. He's got to be like he has been in the previous series. I mean, not, I mean not, he has. I'm not asking him to be great; just be better than what he is. Luca's he can't carry it all himself. He can't have 30 point nights every night, especially in losses. That has has to be so deflating. Now, I just start there. I mean, he's the guy. He's the vet. He's the guy that's been in the, on that stage, uh, playing on championship teams. It has to start with Kyrie. For me, anyways, I'm just I know there's X's and O's to it and breaking down how to get to the hoop better than what they have been, but Kyrie has to be the facilitator. I think he has to be the guy. Yeah, and I think he's got. To, he, he obviously got to shoot it better. Oh, for three from three, yeah, well, seven of eighteen. That goes without that, saying. That's part yeah, but uh, I do too. I, he's the one that I think maybe can speed it up. And now that takes the ball to Lucas' hands, but. I think they've got to play a little bit faster, and maybe they'll maybe it'll be more comfortable at home to do, to try that and get guys open. You know, PJ Washington has reverted back to the mean after the ridiculous shooting that he did against the Thunder from three. He's reverted back to who he is. Even in the last series, he wasn't a flamethrower like he was against yeah. OKC. Then last night, one for five from beyond the arc as well. We got to talk about the call at the end, though. Speaking of PJ Washington, it's a it's a what a five point game. He's out ahead, goes up to dunk it. Brown clearly kind of pushes him in the back. Brown and White meet him at the rim, block shot, no foul. Maybe it doesn't matter. I mean, it's a three point game with what forty five seconds left or what have you. But it certainly changed the dynamics and the pressure that was on uh, that was on Boston by that not being called a foul and letting Washington maybe pull it within three with a couple of free throws. Got to have the drama, right? <laughs> I think there's a call from the front office. Yeah. We need some drama here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see what the calls look like in Dallas. I mean, free throw-wise, Dallas shot more, but that was a huge play. I mean, a huge no call when it happened. Mm-hmm. But... You know, there's always that with any of these NBA games, especially with the way you can slow it down and you can, like, literally kind of go frame by frame, like it's the Supruder film or something <laughs> to to do it. But, uh, you know, there's certainly no, no guarantee that Dallas is able to even get that game into overtime, even if they do call the foul. First off, P.J. Washington was going to have to step to the line and make a couple of free throws, which he was four for four uh, last night throughout the entirety of the game, but... I think it's one of those things that when you lose a game like that, you're just grasping at straws to think, man, we, we could have won. And the truth is, and AJ said it on the text line earlier, the simple truth of the matter is Boston's better. Ultimately, yes. Boston's just better. They than, are. They're than a Dallas. more complete team, I think. They are. And, and But they've they've spent six or seven years building the complete team that they have now. It is is. Dallas, we talk about being on schedule, ahead of schedule, whatever. You know, we, that's a lot of the conversation we have with the Thunder. Is Dallas maybe a, <clears throat> ahead of schedule getting to this, getting to these finals? I don't think or so. Do Luke think? has been there for a while, yeah. the, but the Luca Kyrie thing is pretty young too. That's yeah, true. So maybe in a way, yeah, maybe a little bit ahead, considering that they haven't had a ton of time to play together. When, this, when these playoffs started in the West, a lot of the pick obviously was Denver and and even Minnesota. And I mentioned the Clippers earlier. There wasn't a lot of da- Dallas talk. No, no. There was a, hey, the Thunder's there. Look at that, that young team. They're there. Good for them. But there was no really serious consideration that Dallas was going to make a run all the way to the Thunder or to the uh, finals. So I'm, I'm. No, I'd say they. wonder if they're maybe ahead of schedule. And then they, this, you know, maybe Oh, Cuban's like, all right, this is what we need to. We got here. This is, this is showing me what I need to go get. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean,. <laughs> 
we see it every year. I mean, one of the like one of the two teams gets great role play game after you know game in game out. Maybe not be the same people. And as much as the stars have to be the stars, and they absolutely have to be, the role players decide a lot of these games. We're wrapping up a Monday. Hey, we got the uh, we got the ro- uh, the. This is kind of a tongue twister. The Rotary Radio Auction. Try voicing the promo. (laughs) Rotary Radio Auction. It's coming up. Broadcast live on KECO Thursday and Friday, which is June 20th and 21st from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. The Rotary Radio Auction. Now, you are a Rotarian, so Mm -hmm. tell us Mm -hmm. who you're not. No, I uh, respectfully resigned oh. because I was just getting so busy. Well, I, never mind, they, Jared. They are a great organization. You're there's not going to no, be able to help us much. There's with no this. Uh, animosity or any reason why I left. I just, uh, just I didn't feel like I was a good Rotarian to be there enough. So, but um, yeah, but that's still I still know about this. It's on next week, Thursday, Friday night. What does it say? Seven to seven nine. to nine. Seven to nine each night. Listen on in. You can also uh, watch it on Elk City Rotary Club's Facebook page. But the only way to bid is to call in. So you can watch it and, and listen, I guess, and and, and uh, see the items that are currently up for bid. And it's uh, one of their big fundraisers. They raise money for scholarships, uh, various projects throughout the town. I mean, all the money, that's what Rotary does. Service above self is their motto. All the money goes back into the community they serve and surrounding communities, I might add. The smaller communities, so it's a good it's a good fundraiser. And, and and kudos to all the local businesses that donate too. Yeah, there's tons. The yeah. the final list will be published on June 18th, which is what next Tuesday. That'd be on yes the the next version of the penny news. Yeah. yeah. So next Tuesday, Rotary Club Facebook page. We'll probably have it in the penny news leading up next week for the final list. Now there's all kinds of different. I mean, I'm looking at all the way to 90 at least right here, with different things. That will be available. Minimum bid is 50% of the value. So, Rotary Club a Radio Auction coming up next Thursday and Friday. Got to call 225-9696 to place your bid. Also, thank you to our friends at Rother Brothers. Rother Brothers, family-owned dealership that started by three owners in Kingfisher in 1976. They've expanded to three locations around western Oklahoma, Clinton, Fairview, and Kingfisher, they're the one-stop shop, providing all sorts of equipment, parts, repair services for many makes and models. Highway 183, just north of Clinton, that is our friends at Rother Brothers. Give them a call, 580-323-1981. All right, College World Series field is set up in Omaha. It is all ACC or SEC teams follow college baseball whatsoever throughout the season i don't know how big of a shock that is to anybody that it turned out that way because quite frankly it feels like those are the two places the conferences anyways that have made the commitment from a facility standpoint probably nil as well to be good at it and it turns out the the results match the resources that are allocated from those two conferences it was there was some pretty good baseball you know if, if you're an OU fan you're looking at those scores from Tallahassee especially on what's Friday going what in the world <laughs> what just happened wow 24 to 4 or whatever it's 24 to 1 at one point Florida State beating Connecticut and you've got to be thinking why aren't we there if you're an OSU fan I guess you can take some sort of solace in the fact that you know Florida one of the teams that, quite frankly, was when the selections were made, they were the one that kind of had the bullseye on their back of, oh my gosh, they only got in because they're an SEC team. Look at that record. And all, they're, all they've done is go win at Stillwater, go win at Clemson. And so now Florida, it will be there. By the way, go back and watch highlights of game two against Clemson yesterday. It's like a five-hour game. There was some drama like in the extra, like the last couple innings. You had coaches tossed. You had unbelievable catches. You had like three run, a three run. Clemson hit a three run tie, game tying home run late in the game. 
pushing and shoving. It was incredible. I'll tell you who was good. Who's good? Jack Caglianoni from Florida. That dude is a highlight machine. Anytime I get like some kind of alert or see a tweet about college baseball this season, his name has been in there. That dude is good. Yeah, good point. Uh, this We saw this exact same thing from an SEC team just a couple of years ago. Ole Miss was griped about making the making it into the tournament, and what they do? They won the whole thing, beat no you in the finals. That's true. Who's going to win the Rocco's Jello Shot Challenge? I put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, Oregon. Did you, did you, did you see the Oregon A&M game last I, night? I did not see this one. What happened there? Uh, Oregon was ahead, was it 8-4 to four in like the seventh inning? And they have a senior reliever on the hill, and he just, I mean, walk after walk after oh. walk, and they never had anybody warming up. And it was that A&M of was all that places. A&M. Ball eight, ball eight. Yeah, was, yeah, just walked in a couple of runs, hit a guy to, to walk in a run. Then they replace him at 8-7. The next guy comes in and walks in a run. <laughs> or maybe they replace him at 8-8. Eight, 8-7 eight. Eight, or 8-8. Eight, eight. Then they walk in the next. The next guy comes in, walks in the guy to make it. Maybe it's nine eight, and then a grand slam. All of a sudden, it's thirteen eight. Oh, that's gut wrenching. Coaching malpractice. Absolutely. To let the first poor guy just die on the vine out there. I mean, yeah. he could not. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. But they didn't have anybody up, and they couldn't re- replace him until kind of the the die was cast. Yeah, it was wild. It was wild. That A and M. I'm gonna tell you something. We'll make fun of A and M. I'll make fun of them. As much or more than the next guy. But that atmosphere looked incredible. And I guess they're about to start renovations to that state. The stadium looked awesome, but I guess they're about to really pump some money into it. You know what it's called? Bluebell Park. You think that's clearly the ice cream oh, people, of course. right? Yeah, that's a Texas ice yeah. cream company or whatever. It looked like a cool atmosphere. I that's promise awesome. you that. Yeah, so, they, that's something that A&M's figured out is baseball. Yeah. <laughs> they claim the tradition in football, but we all kind of make fun of them. But baseball, they've been kind of consistently good, if not great, over the years. All right, who you got? For the Rocco's yes. Jello Shot Challenge. Well, you got to kind of take some things in consideration. One, how long is the fan base going to be there? And two, yeah, where Yeah, since LSU's from? not there, you got to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> I know Tennessee was on – I mean, they the game three was forced, but they're there. In Tennessee and Kentucky. Now, listen to me about Kentucky. You're talking about – Kentucky has never been there. You're talking about moonshiners here. Kentucky has never been there. And that's another thing. They've never been there, and their fans are like, okay, it's our first go-around. We need to make a statement. And then you got to think that, okay, boosters are a big part of this. They come in and buy a whole bunch of them and spread the wealth. But I'm down between Tennessee and Kentucky. I'll say Tennessee because I think they'll be there longer. What say you? See, the booster thing I had not thought about. The, the I had not thought about that part of it, having some guy just go in there and drop 10 Well, grand. I remember that being a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which would – kind of lead me toward A&M because I also think a and going to be there a while. Good, good point. Um, if you look at the party school rankings, <laughs> there's one that's that always seems to be toward the top of the party school list of, of any of these, and that's Florida State. Mm-hmm. Florida schools are... Florida State always seems thing. to be pretty pretty high up on that list. Yeah, I mean, you, I, go, I would, you go to Florida for spring break... I'll be honest. So. I'll be pretty shocked if it's Virginia or North Carolina. Now, Virginia's going to be they dead last. They seem way too, you uppity, know. Uppity, uppity. Yes. Too cool for jello I shots. I want a white wine spritzer, please. Yes, that, that's exactly right. Or, yeah, they don't They don't participate. I would I would not put them in anywhere near. I like the Kentucky angle if they get to, if they get to stay long enough because they've never been there. Now, what if Georgia punches their tickets? Yeah, I know. Consider the consideration for the Bulldog fans. Nah. Not really? 
I'm going to say it's going to be A&M. Okay. I will, I'll settle on Tennessee. Okay. But I think uh, they'll be close with Kentucky. I just, I'm just i afraid Florida State's not going to be there very long. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll settle with A&M. By the way, the, the bar that is Rocco's that Rocco's. does this, is the, they, it's like a charity thing, right? Yes. Yeah. I actually follow – on Listen, Twitter. I would drink a lot more if it went to charity. <laughs> I'd feel good about it. Maybe that's better. I'm going to say, after this weekend at the oil and gas, I don't know if I can <laughs> say anything that. going to charity there? Uh, <laughs> Maybe some. Uh, Somehow I've hurt my leg. I don't know. Oh, well. I don't know what happened. I don't know. It's not good, like, man. pulled my Achilles tendon <laughs> oh, or man. something. I uh, were you playing? Or were you just... Did you get? Did, I'm sorry if I asked. Did you play? Or you just? Did I play? What do you mean? Did you play in the, the golf in the tournament? tournament? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So I mean, well, what I did on Saturday, I was there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we could call that playing. It was ridiculous. It was terrible, terrible, terrible. But it was good. It was hot. Yeah, it was incredibly hot. It was hot. I Easily for- the hottest day of the year. I forgot to drink water on Friday. Uh, and yeah, it showed. You have to. You have to do some. Drink a Gatorade. Yeah, you got to prep for that. You can't just show up on a hot day and start drinking water. I drink a bunch water. of water on like through the week to, mm-hmm. you know, but I blew it on Friday. Yeah. And then I drink a bunch of water on Saturday. It was toasty. Thank goodness there's a little wind. There's yes. a breeze. I mean, so that actually Friday, helps. Even though Friday, was- there wasn't much breeze at first. And then when we started playing, it kicked up a little bit. And then, like, about halfway through, it just went away. And it was hot. Like, it was more It was more muggy on Friday. than it was. Saturday was just hot. It was hot. But it got pretty muggy Friday afternoon or fr- early evening. And it was like, golly. Yeah, yesterday was refreshing. At least to start the day. It got a little, little humid towards mid-afternoon but it was nice to start the day yeah why its first game is like 10 30 or something it was nice out little there. sprinkles did you get those little sprinkles mm, we, we, were, had a, we had one at nine we were we, in between yeah we had one at nine and we got a little sprinkles no it was good very good people freaking out said do you want this or 100 degree weather <laughs> i'll take <laughs> I'll that take the little all sprinkles. day long all day long all right everybody have a great monday stanley cup finals game two tonight oilers and the panthers Going on. That's about it on my docket. Yeah. So the College World Series starts later on. Yep. Wonderful Monday, everybody. Skinny on Sports on the Sports Animal. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered.